Hello everybody, this is Professor Samuel Dahan with my colleague Professor Daniel Guerra from Columbia Business School. So I've been working with uh, Daniel to, on a new employment law project, it's called the Contractor Project, and we're trying to predict whether a worker is a, an independent contractor or an employee. And Professor Guerra is trying to come up with our team of data scientists with a new model on how to predict whether someone is a contractor or an employee. And one of the big challenge is to determine uh, the level of accuracy or whether the prediction is correct. And there are a few ways to determine whether a prediction is correct. I mean, one way is accuracy and the other way is called AUC. And Professor Guetta is gonna tell us a little bit about the difference and why AUC, I don't know if it's new, a new way of determining whether prediction is accurate, whether it may be better than accuracy. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Dahan. So let's uh, think a little bit about how you measure the accuracy of a predictive model. Um, let's try and think, just for the sake of arguments, I hope you can all see the board behind here or draw some things on here. Let's imagine that we have, let's say, four data points. I'm going to draw them as stick figures, so these are four people who might be contractors or who might not be contractors. And let's imagine that I have some data from a given lawsuit where I actually know who are contractors and who aren't. So for example, this person over here is classified as a contractor, this person over here is classified as a contractor, but this person wasn't and this person wasn't, just based on what the judge said in the particular case. Now what I'm going to want to do and what we're trying to do in, the, in our research with Professor Dahan is to say, well, can we look at data about these people, how often they work, what kind of conditions they work under, and so on and so forth. And can we use that data to try and predict what this outcome would be, what the judge is going to say? So we can use all kinds of models to fit, uh, to, to try and make that kind of prediction, and I won't spend too long discussing those now, but all the models, what they have in common, is they're going to take all the data about each person, and they're gonna come out with a number between zero and one, a probability that tells you how likely it is that this person is a contractor. So my model might look at this individual here and tell me, aha, this person has a 0 0.85 chance of being a contractor. Then it may look at this person and say, oh, you know what, I'm looking at this person's data. This person only has a 0 0.3 chance of being a contractor. This person might be, I don't know, a 0 0.6, and this person may be a 0 0.65. And again, how we get these numbers, I won't get into now. That might just be what our model kind of outputs. Now the question is, how well did our model do? How good are these predictions? Now you look at this and you realize something looks a bit off, right? This person who wasn't a contractor, our model predicted a pretty high probability. This person who was, our model predicted low. So something's a little off, but how do we actually quantify that? How do we actually figure out the best measure to decide how good our model is? So the first measure Professor Dahan told you about is accuracy. The accuracy is the most obvious measure you could think of. What would you do? You would say, well, look, if this number is above 0.5, then you say my model's prediction is a yes. If it's below 0.5, you say your model's prediction is a no. So in this case, 0.85, the prediction is a yes. 0.3, the prediction is a no. 0.6, it's a yes. And 0.65, it's a yes. And then you look at how many times you were right. So the first one is correct. We predicted a yes, and it was indeed a contractor. Second one is also correct. We predicted a no, and it wasn't a contractor. Third one is also correct. Fourth one is incorrect. We predicted it was a contractor, it actually wasn't. So the accuracy here is three quarters. So far with me? Great. Why is that not ideal? Why is the accuracy not the be all and end all? Why do we need to look further than the accuracy? Well, here's the problem. We've made the assumption here that 0.5 is the right threshold to use. We've made the assumption that above 0.5 we predict a yes, below 0.5 we predict a no. But that's not always the right choice. I want you to imagine right now that instead of predicting whether someone is a contractor, each of these points is a nuclear power plant and we're predicting whether it's gonna explode. Are we really gonna say that if there's a higher than 0.5 probability it's gonna explode, we're gonna go and deal with it, and if it's below 0.5, we can lay back and not worry? Of course not, we're gonna use a much lower threshold. We'll say if there's even a 1% chance the power plant is gonna explode, we're gonna go and try and fix it. Similarly, there are some cases where you'd use a very high threshold. For example, suppose the threshold is, is someone going to commit a crime? Should we go and arrest them? 
To arrest someone, you're going to want a much higher threshold than 0.5. You're going to want a 99% chance that this person is maybe going to commit a crime or escape from jail for you to maybe want to consider uh, taking action for them. So in other words, the problem with accuracy is that the threshold of 0.5 is not necessarily the right one. And this is where, and I'm almost done, I promise, I introduce the concept of the AUC, which stands for Area Under the Curve. There are all kinds of reasons it's called the Area Under the Curve, uh, and I won't necessarily go into them now. It actually comes from World War II, where this was originally devised as a measure for radar physics. That's where sort of the AUC originally uh, comes from. But let me give you the intuition behind the AUC. The intuition behind the AUC says, you know what, I don't actually care what these probabilities are. The actual numbers themselves don't bother me. All I want to know is that when this probability is very high, I want to be sure the person is indeed a contractor. And when the probability is low, I want to be sure the person actually isn't a contractor. So what the AUC does is it simply says, let me consider pairs of people and let's see whether the scores are ordered in the correct direction. Let me explain what I mean by this. Suppose I take these first two people. This one was truly a contractor. This one wasn't. We look at this person's score as 0.85. This person's score is 0.3. That's good news, right? The contractor got a higher score than the non-contractor. If, however, I look at these two people, this person was a contractor, got a score of 0.6. This person was not a contractor, got a score of 0.65. That's bad, because the non-contractor got a higher score than the contractor. And finally, if I look at these two, this person was not a contractor, this person was, but this person got a higher score than this one, so that's good. And if I look at every possible combination of all my data points and try and figure out how many of those combinations is correctly ordered, that measure is the AUC or the area under the curve. And it's often a much, much better measure to use than the accuracy because it doesn't require a specific threshold to be used. But again, the application is always going to dictate which measure is more correct. Sometimes the accuracy is indeed the right one, but in our case, we're also investigating the AUC as a measure. And that's it, the AUC on one leg. Thank you so much, Professor Guetta. That was a brilliant explanation. If I'm correct, this model proves what the... This is indeed a proof that the AUC is what I described. Well, that's brilliant. I can give you your, like, you can look at it. I'm sure you can verify uh, the, the, whether these models are correct. Let me know if you find a typo in the, in the formula. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Guetta. This was uh, Samuel Dahan uh, from uh, Columbia Business School from Professor Daniel Guerra's office and uh, I hope this was uh, very helpful uh, for our team and also for our viewers who may be interested in how we're making predictions in conflict resolution. Have a great weekend.